Hey guys, this is Cassie with Tape, and today you join me on the runway with a brand new aircraft. This is the HSI Mark III. Now, at first you may be thinking, the Mark III? I haven't even seen the Mark II yet, Peter, you're, you're crazy. Well, I actually need to explain my naming scheme a little bit. It's not very good. Basically, before, all of these kind of aircraft were all called High Speed Interceptor Mark whatever. And that was true of HSI Mark I. It's an interceptor. It's also true of HSI Mark II. This is also an interceptor. Basically, an interceptor is a plane that is designed to stop an enemy completing a mission for, like, shooting down bombers or fighter bombers or fighters or whatever, basically. And that's what these do best. They work really well with AI mode and they shoot down enemy planes. But the HSI Mark II isn't an interceptor, so I've changed my naming scheme a little bit. That is now called the HSFA Mark II. Um, I've kept the like Mark One, Mark Two, Mark Three, even though they're technically like different prefix names. But it's almost like uh, the American aircraft. You know, you have the F-15, the F-16, the F-A-18, and the F-22. Basically, F-A means fighter attack aircraft, which is a uh, fighter and a ground attack aircraft. So that's a little bit of preface about <laughs> the naming of my aircraft, um, which has not been great. But yeah. Anyway, so, let's take a look at this plane. This is designed to replace the HSI Mark I. You may remember, if you have a really good memory, and really care, uh, that uh, when I did my Next Generation Air Force video, I said I was going to keep the HSI Mark I around because it's a very good interceptor, which it is. But it's not good enough, because I've designed a truly Next Generation interceptor. It turns faster, uh, it, which is nice, with these better wings set up. It has a much more powerful engine. It is actually slightly heavier, but with the powerful engine, it can carry more fuel. I think it's currently... Uh, oh, good. the same amount of fuel, and have a much higher thrust-to-weight ratio, so it can climb vertically much better. Um, it turns faster, it can sustain turns a lot better. Um, and the tank setup's kind of nice. It uh, currently carries 800 units of fuel, but it can carry um, 1,200. I have this tank here, which I can fill up for really long-range missions. You may remember in the last very long time ago um, collaborative warfare episode, uh, I had to put some drop tanks on the HSI Mark I to get it to do a long-range mission, and that increases drag. But if I fill this up, it won't increase drag, it'll just increase fuel capacity, which is quite nice. And then um, there's another fuel tank somewhere? There. And then these are also around the outside, just to kind of give it a nicer body shape and give it better fuel capacity without being really long. Which is nice because I like to keep these aircraft quite small, kind of like F-16s. Um, yeah, oh, and Collaborative Warfare, by the way, is still happening. Uh, Agonarch is very busy, he's got a lot of stuff going on, he's a real person, unlike me and like Penguin and stuff. We're just like school kids, although I am at uni, but whatever. So, it will be returning really soon, I hope. <laughs> anyway, so yeah. That is the aircraft. It also carries um, a much better weapons payload. It carries four sidewinders instead of um, two, uh, but it could carry more if I really desired. And it has a single Vulcan turret on the side. Now, me, my other one had two Vulcan turrets. This just has the one, and it's kind of on the side, which may look weird, but that's much more realistic to modern fighters. Like, the F-22 has just one turret off to the side, and since it only has one, it can fire for much longer, and I only really need one to uh, carry out the job of dogfighting. And this does dogfight quite nicely, even as a human. Maybe we should do a little of that, <laughs> rather than just ending it here with a quick look at the aircraft. But yeah, it's a pretty simple aircraft, so I'm just going to leave it there. And I think I'm going to show you how good it is against the HSI Mark I. Now, the camera angle for this will be quite weird, because I'm using a HOTAS. Yes, I bought a HOTAS, not just for KSP, but it actually is really fun with KSP, so I've pretty much mainly been using it with KSP for dogfighting. Um, and it means a fixed cannon isn't such a setback. So yeah, anyway, let's just do this. Um, <laughs> I tried to buzz through that quite quickly because the best bit of this video is the dogfighting. So, uh, yeah, I've locked the camera behind it so I can always see what I'm doing. I guess I could use chase camera, but chase camera's terrible. Um, so yeah, anyway, let's uh, get this thing rolling. Uh, so, what are my controls? This is engine on. This is brakes off, and let's go. I'll also have to flick myself onto Team B and select the Vulcan turret. Yes, I'm not going to be using missiles like a bitch. I'm going to uh, use turrets because it's a lot of fun, and it doesn't really prove how uh, good this aircraft is if I just do a missile kill. Um, <laughs> so we're going to try and do a little bit of a dogfight. I have done quite a few of these, especially with the HOTAS recently. Makes it much easier. I was a little worried that it wouldn't actually be that easy, but yeah. Hopefully my flying will be okay while talking. I know it definitely wasn't. Um, it was No, I, I'd say it wasn't against Penguin's aircraft, but I did win, so yeah. Um, anyway, I'm just going to wait for it to start turning so it's a little fairer. And then I'll just lead it. And, oh shit, oh, overrolled. Yeah, that happens a lot with me. I often roll too much. I do have flares, yeah, good. Um, gotta make sure I've set up the hotel properly. <laughs> 
Anyway, yeah, so basically, in a, in a dogfight, you pretty much want to just get behind your enemy aircraft and stay behind your enemy aircraft until the enemy aircraft is dead. Um, and I'm going to try and put guns to it, obviously, uh, which will hopefully happen at some point so this video isn't too long. But yeah, in modern engagements, um, guns aren't... Well, they you some gun some there are still some gun kills and uh, air combat, but it's almost an oh fuck fuck sticks. I haven't set up my fire key. Oh shit! There we go. Oh my god. Okay, so okay, I probably just lost now because I hadn't set up my uh, fire button <laughs> on the hotel, so I would have had to click. Yeah. Um, on my uh, HSI Mark II, I've used a Vulc. Oh my god. Oh my Jesus. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna put that down to um, uh, me being me being stupid and not setting up <laughs> my keyboard. But hopefully, I can still win this even without your control. But I'm probably gonna lose now, which makes this look really bad. In a engagement where I didn't have to stop for ages, uh, I would probably do much better. Um, <laughs> that as is the way with things. All right. Oh, this is embarrassing. <laughs> okay. Um, you know what? Oh, there we go. Oh, I didn't find its mark. I was going to see if I could just finish off with uh, missiles now that I don't have a tailplane. Uh, <laughs> yeah, okay. Let's try and just bring this around. Okay, ooh, Jesus Christ. Uh, okay. Alright, let's get back in this. What was I saying? Um, yeah, uh, in modern air combat, there's very rarely kills with guns anymore, because missiles are so good, um, and most combat like happens beyond visual range, so guns are pretty useless. Um, I've also set this up terribly, so it's firing for too long. Um, I'm also flying not great. I've learned alright, I mean, you know, I'm, I'm doing okay, but did lose my tailplane. I think just my tailplane, right? Yeah, that's fine. That's only a really vital part of the aircraft. <laughs> but you can see just how easy I'm... Oh, god damn. <laughs> I was going to say how easily I'm staying behind the aircraft there. But yeah, behind the HSI Mark 1, it's just... Oh, motherfucker. Uh, okay. Yeah. Uh, you can just see how freaking easy it is to stay behind this enemy uh, with this aircraft. It's just so much more maneuverable. Especially now I've uh, tactically reduced the weight by getting rid of the tailplane. That was obviously what I wanted. Fuck. Okay, we're going to go negative turn? Alright. <laughs> yeah, I can actually outturn this by going the other way, which is quite nice. Uh, <laughs> oh god, I'm totally gonna die, aren't I? Because I don't have a tailplane. I'm gonna have to edit this so much, or just edit this specific, specific, specific bit out. Couldn't say specific for a while. That was worrying. <laughs> oh god. Hopefully, we won't be fighting over the Pacific Ocean, or I might have a similar issue. Um, or the specific ocean. Not the Pacific Ocean, just a very specific ocean. Damn it, I'm so close! It is nice sometimes in an air engagement how close you get to the enemy, just like trailing right behind it. You also may be noticing that this engine isn't kicking off much of a... Uh... Oh, shit. Oh, he's behind me. I heard him firing. I might die. And I have flat spun. I am now in a flat spin at the mercy of my enemy. Ah, I've got a bag. <laughs> oh... God, this is going horribly. Oh, there we go. Looks like I am dead. <laughs> okay, right. Um, so I'm I'm dead. Let's try that again, shall we, without losing the tailplane? <laughs> oh God. Oh, what was I saying? Probably something about missiles. Missiles are good, but in Vietnam, actually, um, they didn't put any guns on the F4 Phantoms to start with, which was the fighter jets the Americans were using. And, uh, yeah, they didn't get a great kill ratio because the Sidewinders weren't very good. Uh, they had about a 14% kill ratio, which is not great, um, given that they probably only carried, like, maybe four missiles. So you're very unlikely to kill your enemy. And they had about a one-to-one -one kill ratio, which is not very good for a superpower versus Nam. Like, in Korea, it was 10 to 1. Well, uh, yeah, 10 to 1. Uh, but in Korea, I mean, those, those aircraft had, like, six freaking guns on them. Um... Uh, yeah, I mean, they had like they often had like six cannons on their aircraft just because it was almost well, it was entirely like gunned combat. All right, let's try and take this down. Prove my worth after that crushing defeat. All right, <laughs> I actually recorded this before, but it wasn't very good. Uh, but the dog fighting went really well, so maybe I'll just slide that in instead. Ooh, 
Oh, come on! <laughs> My gun isn't working! Oh, there we go. Jesus. Alright. Okay, that took much less time than before. Hopefully I will not be killed. <laughs> I've really got to watch that. I'm one day going to get into an engagement with one of Penguin's Moroses, and I'm not going to have a gun set up, and then I'm just going to finish him off with missiles, obviously. No, I want to get a gun to kill in real combat. Yeah. Um, anyway. Oh, I am loving this plane quite a lot. Because the Age of Simon one's really hard to fly as a human. And even with a keyboard, I, I must point out that this aircraft is rather nice. I... Oh, God. So if... Uh, Oh yeah, well, another thing, uh, just a quick message to my allies. Um, or my neutrals, since Harpooner will be coming into the game soon. Okay, I'm trying to do a negative turn again. This, uh, this is almost, this aircraft is almost reminiscent of the F-16, and you know what the F-16 was. Probably one of the most, the, the most produced fighter aircraft in the world, because, um, oh Christ. God damn it. <laughs> because, um, uh, because so many people bought it. Because, you know, I mean, Israel has them, uh, Turkey has them, lots of countries have them. So, Aganash, if you need a very simple, very effective fighter jet, I'm sure you'll have perfectly adequate uh, uh, technology yourself, but I'm just saying, you know, if you uh, want a perfectly adequate, very nice, very simple um, aircraft for defending your airspace or attacking other people's airspace, this is open to you. The, you can get the blueprint, or maybe we can have some sort of trade, and you can have one that I'll send to you. Same goes for uh, Harpooner, if he happens to watch this, which I might just Skype them and tell them that. <laughs> Since he is a neutral, and I'm obviously all about defending, uh, not weak, but, you know, glorious people who are, you know, oh shit, he's turned on me again. Um, he, that'll also be open source to that. Penguin and Twitchy, um, you can have them in your skies, but, I mean... I guess they will be testing your aircraft, if you're man enough to put put guns to my aircraft. I know Penguin already has his Moroses, but he's a fan of bombers, which will be very, very quickly dispatched by these. Um, I did try flying like a heavy bomber and uh, didn't go well uh, against this. Um, <laughs> and a couple of these in the sky, they're pretty much undefeatable. If you, if you were to get two in one place, if you had somewhere you really wanted to defend, say, the Arctic, or... I don't know, A Industries headquarters. Uh, <laughs> uh, oh god. Okay. Ooh. Ooh, okay. I am having a terrible time putting guns at this today. I'm usually slightly better, but maybe because I'm talking? Or maybe it's just because I'm just... Now that I'm actually <laughs> knowing that people are going to see this, I'm I'm realizing how terrible a fighter jet are. A fighter jet? Yeah, I'm not a very good fighter jet. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. Let's just try and get this kill and tell more interesting stories about the uh, uh, fighter jets. Such as, you may be wondering, Peter, why did you uh, pick a single engine for this? It doesn't seem smart. Well, there's a lot of interesting things behind a single engine, actually. Um, it's usually advisable to take two engines with you. Because if one goes out, uh, uh, fails, you know, you, you are going to want a second one so you can get home. Um, Oh, fucking hell. I hit him. Didn't kill him, though. Didn't get a good hit. Uh, but usually when there's, like, something devastating, uh, the engine may explode and just take out the other engine. So, I mean, sometimes it's not particularly useful. And often, in real life, um, uh, a human error makes, sec uh, makes se uh, second engine uh, much worse because there's twice the chance that someone will fuck something up. And you might just, like, end up going into a flat spin with your two engines. Ooh, some hits, but nothing, nothing, nothing ripping anything off. Have I made? Have I in, like put on invincible parts or something? No, Peter, because last time you got killed. Uh, <laughs> oh god, yeah. Okay, come on, lead him. Oh, I'm turning too fast. I think I may have my sensitivity up a little. Stop making excuses, Peter. I yeah, this is the same sensitivity I, sensitivity I always use. Maybe it's just because I'm talking. Maybe I should just put Top Gun music on and just kind of. Oh, god damn it! Damn. Ah. <laughs> See, the important thing about it is not putting guns to him for a millisecond and getting one shot on him. It's about consistently having your gun on him. So you really want to stay behind him, not just... Oh my god, I cannot kill today. God, I usually love killing. But you can, even with my terrible shooting, you can see how easy, easily this is staying 
behind the HSI Mark 1, which I have previously break there we go, motherfucker. <laughs> I killed him. That was actually a pretty nice way of putting guns, actually. Uh, you like easing behind and um just putting the guns at the back of them. Yeah, so that was pretty good, and you can see I could click on a couple of sidewinders just to finish them off if I was feeling particularly evil, but of course I always am. I mean, not evil like Penguin, but, you know. Uh, oh! Yeah, the first one missed. Even, yeah, that's the problem with missiles, is sometimes they miss. Um, but yeah. I feel like I'm saying something about uh, double engines. Yeah, sometimes human error. But in uh, GSB, I've often found that, well, I'm... If I was going to make a relatively small aircraft, because I like having a small aircraft, it makes it nice and easy to dodge missiles. Um, I and I'd kind of if I was going to have two engines on a small aircraft, they'd have to be quite close together. In my experience, two engines very close together are pretty much just as likely to both get shot out. I mean, I very rarely don't have that. With the HSI Mark II, they're spaced, so it's much better like that. But that's quite a big fighter, and I want a small, simple one. Um, but yeah. Uh, I'm just going to try and land this with a HOTAS. I'm uh, not a particularly... Uh, I, I've done some landings, but on my last recording I kind of ditched quite hard. Okay, I'm going to run out of runway. Oh my god! Oop, gee, oh, okay, I'm overcorrecting. You know, I'll just land on this grass. <laughs> yeah, so, I mean, two engines is good in some situations, but I really did like the idea of going for one for this. Also, really adds to the whole F-16 motif I've got going on. Um, but yeah, so... Conclusion, much better aircraft. Um, I do have to say that I usually do get a kill much more quickly than that, but uh, still, I still got it. And The main point of that was really showing how easily it stays behind um, the HSI Mark II. Mark I, even. Uh, Mark II as well, It's hi this is really maneuverable. It's not hyper-maneuverable, but, um, you know, hyper-maneuverability is a whole different subject. I'll probably get into another day. But yeah, anyway, this is my nice, simple f 16 I know it doesn't really look like an F-16, but... It's kind of reminiscent, you know, kind of with the canard design and single engine, the lightness, the fact that I will be sourcing it to my glorious allies and friends, um, if they so desire. Because we do exchange craft sometimes, but this will be really readily available. Anyway, yeah, so this is the new Interceptor. The HSI Mark I will be being retired. There is still one on active service, so you may still see it around. But yeah, this is our newest Interceptor. I hope you've enjoyed this. I hope my flying wasn't too terrible for you to watch. I will see you next time. Thank you.